How do online games synchronize their gameplay? In the case of online chess, we can take advantage of chess notation. Each move is transmitted, and the game state is reproducible, so long as you have the history of the moves. Oh crap. The developers of StarCraft came up with a similar solution. Each action you take is recorded and transmitted. The only difference is that instead of taking turns and submitting the action, the game processes the game state 24 times per second. You can almost think of it as a turn-based game where each player takes 24 turns per second. This way, only a very small amount of data needs to be transmitted across the internet. This kind of game structure also enables other nice features, like replays in StarCraft, or this feature in Chess.com where you can click on old moves and reset the game state, if you're playing against the computer. Also, what in the world is this feature? Anyways, anyone can recreate a chess game by hand, provided you're given the move list. You just need to understand chess notation. But for a game like StarCraft, there's a lot of complex math involved, and doing all that math by hand isn't really feasible. But if you did know all the math behind the game, and you got it all correct, except for one little tiny thing where your math is just a fraction of a percent off, what would happen? Now, the concept of a tiny thing causing big problems is known as the butterfly effect. Here is footage, recently declassified by the White House, showcasing the butterfly effect in action. Okay, but seriously, tiny math errors were plaguing the Little Big Planet games on our PCS3 for a while. Oh yeah, the Little Big Planet servers were taken offline. But since our PCS3 has its own replacement for the PlayStation Network and RPCN, and because the Little Big Planet community recreated the Little Big Planet servers, it became possible to play online again. So long as you were both on the same brand of CPU. Now, why is that? Don't both Intel and AMD implement x86 accurate to the specification? Well, that's exactly where the problem is. See, there are instructions like RCPPS that are little underspecified. See, the RCPPS instruction is defined to get a reciprocal estimate with only about 0.0366% error. AMD and Intel have both adhered to the spec here, but the spec doesn't preclude providing a more accurate result. And there's the problem. They ain't the same level of accuracy. Now, taking the reciprocal of something is dead simple. The purpose of these instructions is typically to speed up division. To take the reciprocal of 2, we just have to divide 1 by 2, giving us a result of 0.5. Then, we can multiply something by 0.5 to effectively divide it by 2. That's basically the purpose of these reciprocal estimate instructions. To allow us to essentially divide things in a performant way, without all the complexity that hardware division would entail. Now, let's take a look at what RCPPS does if you try to take the reciprocal of 1. Oh, that's, uh, that's not right. Now, Intel and AMD actually both spit out an identical result here, but if we instead take the reciprocal of 1.4, AMD provides a result above what it should be, while Intel provides a result below what it should be. Crap. Now, Intel actually has a solution for this problem. With AVX512, we have the instruction VRCP14PS, which is about six times more accurate than the good old RCPPS. To give you an idea of how much more precise that is, the same 1 divided by 1 results in 0.999969 with this algorithm, which is significantly more correct. Now, the key thing here is that VRCP14PS actually has a properly defined algorithm. This way, both Intel and AMD can have identical accuracy for reciprocal estimates. I mean, it would be a solved problem if Intel could actually ship consumer hardware with AVX512. Now, why in the world was RPCS3 using these instructions? Well. The PlayStation 3 also has some similar reciprocal estimate instructions, and directly using these estimate instructions was slightly closer to PlayStation 3 behavior, rather than just getting an accurate result by dividing 1 by our value. Now, Galsiv, the developer behind RPCN, was flooded with reports of Little Big Planet multiplayer being broken, but he didn't know where the problem was. Now, since I was familiar with the SBU recompilers, and I know enough x86 trivia to kill a horse, I quickly guessed that the issue lied with the reciprocal and square root estimate instructions. I was right. But Galsiv was determined to resolve this issue properly, not implement another half-fix. So he wrote test programs for the PlayStation 3, determined the formula behind these estimate instructions, and then implemented it all. You can sort of think of these instructions as similar to the famous reciprocal square root estimate from Quake 3, only instead of being implemented in software, these are super fast versions that are implemented purely in hardware. On the PlayStation 3, these instructions are actually split into two. First, the FREST instruction performs a table lookup based on the values in the exponent and mantissa of our floating point number. 
Then, the FI instruction interpolates between the values from our table lookup to produce an approximate result. Now, using these instructions to take the reciprocal of 1 gives us a result of 0 0.999878, which is slightly more accurate than RCPPS. FREST and FI are likely split into two instructions as the SVU has no instructions that entail multiple microops. The table lookup uses the odd pipe. The interpolation uses the even pipe. Now, the SPU manual recommends a sequence of four instructions. FREST, followed by FI, which provides our approximate result. Then, by executing these next two instructions, we can improve the accuracy of our result. These instructions are performing something known as a newton raphson iteration. This first instruction, FNMS, stands for Floating Negate Multiply Subtract. FMA stands for Floating Multiply Add. Now, by using these instructions in this pattern, we can actually turn our approximate reciprocal into something more accurate. If we execute all four instructions to get the reciprocal of 1, we get this result, which is exactly one bit off of 1. Essentially, by doing a little calculus, we're able to refine the result and, depending on the value, get either the precise result for the reciprocal operation, or one bit off of the precise operation. Now, originally, we needed one x86 instruction to emulate this pair of SPU instructions. See, we just placed the full estimate in the result of FREST, and treated FI as a register-to-register -register move operation. Yeah, it was a cheeky little hack, but it was fast and did work well for 99% of games. Now, to accurately emulate this, we need all of these instructions. And hell, let's throw in the necessary code for the newton raphson iteration too. Now, Galsiv saw this, and decided to optimize the code a little bit. Actually, since this whole sequence provides a mostly accurate result for division, we can just replace all this with this, and emulate all four instructions with just one. Oops. Well, nothing is ever actually that simple, and we actually need to fix the results, such that NAND becomes infinity, and infinity becomes zero, which requires some more instructions. With AVX512, there's actually an instruction that helps us do exactly that. VFixup MPS is designed to classify floating point values to various cases, and then map those cases to a different value, which allows us to solve all this nonsense with just one instruction. Now, Galsiv also wrote a test to confirm the performance of the optimizations. Without optimization, the test completes in 8,264 milliseconds. Oh shit, not good! With the division pattern matching optimization, the test completes in 2,480 milliseconds. Oh shit, good! And by using VFixup MPS for the special cases, the test can be completed in just 2,195 milliseconds. Nice. Now, this video's covered a lot of subjects, but I only barely touched on the calculus behind the PlayStation 3's reciprocal estimates. If you want to understand calculus yourself, then check out this video's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning app that allows you to learn at your own pace, on your PC or mobile device. Brilliant features unique visual and interactive lessons that make learning things like calculus or Python much more intuitive. If you enjoy learning about math and science, but textbooks and classrooms are feeling stale, then seriously, give Brilliant a try. If you are interested and want to start learning for free, go to brilliant.org slash cookie, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. If you sign up using my link, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Anyways, if you want to see some other videos that always end up looping back to PlayStation 3 emulation, check out the rest of my videos. Oh yeah, like and subscribe. See ya!